Hello everyone, welcome back. This time I'm doing a code horses problem. It's from isico.guide in the sorting section of silver. Alright, so the idea of this problem is you are given n strings of various lengths and you have to put them together in an order that um, makes the resulting string have the lowest or minimum lexicographical order. So that's like basically alphabetical order that they use in libraries. Um, an example would be if you had a book named, I don't know, um, let's say The Great Gatsby. So that starts with T, but if you had another book, um, I don't know, Captain Underpants, a childhood favorite of many people, um, that would come first, so because the letter C is before the letter T in the alphabet, then uh, in lexicographical order, Captain Underpants goes before the Great Gatsby. And it might be that way as well for the quality of the, uh, the writing. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so um, what you have to do is basically sort each of the strings into their own lexicographical order, and then you can put them together, um, and that will give you the lowest or minimum uh, resulting value. So that definitely makes sense, but the hard part is actually coming up with how you're going to sort them into order. So um, essentially it boils down to figure out the way to compare two strings and see which one is uh, bigger or smaller in the alphabetical order. And then the problem mainly comes from, um, well, what kind of approach are you going to take? Um, I thought of two, so I'll just explain them right now. Basically, um, one is, that I thought of initially, was basically, there's probably some way to go through, well, you can iterate through each letter, starting from the first letter of both strings, then to the second letter, comparing each of them at uh, each iteration of the loop. So uh, let's say you had like apple versus banana, then just on the first iteration, you would look at the first element in apple, which is A, and then you would look at the first element of banana, which is B, so um, then you could just say, well, the first string won already, so that's that. But what if you had to compare like apple versus apples? So just adding an S on the end. Well, then by the time you reach the end of the first string, you, um, you cannot compare any more letters to the next, um, the next ones in apples. So S has nothing to be compared to, and then you have a problem. So I didn't know how to resolve that problem. I thought of like various ways of um, trying to come up with all the possible cases. And I think that is probably possible, but it doesn't seem to be necessary because I just gave up and tried the second approach that I thought of uh, about halfway through my thinking through of the first one that I just described. So the second process is you take your two strings, A and B, you can just append them together in the different orders. Like the first string would start with A and then continue into B, but the second string would start with B going into A. And then you can just, well, you know they have the same length, so you can just um, iterate through using the same method that I talked about using the first method, except this time um, it kind of might take longer, but it doesn't really matter in the long term because it's only like two times, um, two times as long for the worst case situation, which is not actually that much. It's still, you know, O of N for the, um, for the sort, or no, the comparison. So O of two times N versus O of N, yes, that's kind of important, but not really, because they're still in the same kind of order of magnitude. Um, and what I'm talking about is like, let's say you had um, two strings that were 
basically the same, then uh, it was just like, let's say you had a, I don't know, versus, let's say you had that. So in the second method, what would happen is you would have this string, um, Okay, so let me just delete the spaces here. Um, so these are the two strings. This is the first string, this is the second string. If you use the method I just described, which is uh, the one with adding the two strings together in a different order, you would have this, which is two times as long as um, one string would be, basically two times as long. But um, if you use the first method I talked about, maybe there's a way that you could go through each of the cases um, and you would be done in about half of the time. So, um, let me check. Okay. So for the first method I talked about, you could just go through and then see, well, they repeat up to this point, um, right here. And then you can just check, well, maybe this one has something to do with like the ending value of this or the ending value or the starting value of um, both strings. Um, but it seems like, um, it seems like it would have to do a lot more with uh, the person or the programmer thinking of the way to solve that issue rather than the computer just um, doing like this uh, kind of dumb brute force thing. Even though this takes two times as long, um, it's a lot more simple and you don't have to think of any extra cases. So for this one to actually succeed, um, actually, I guess you don't have to do that. It ends right here. So actually, wait, this method is just smarter in the end. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, just just forget this. I'm not even gonna delete. I'm just gonna delete all of that. Not even gonna comment it. Uh, wait, I can keep this. Okay. Um, let me write a comment here. Ends here, and then let me. Uh, whoops. Backspace. The carrot sign. Uh, for both cases. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what uh, technique you use. Then I just had that revelation. Um, so this is actually the better technique, although um, it takes up more memory because you make two more new strings. But you know it doesn't really matter. Okay, so um, let's just go through the code now real quick after explaining the uh, algorithm. So first, we set up a, an array of strings, and this is the maximum length. So we set there, and then let's go into main. We get n, the number of strings that it gives you at first, and then we input that into the string array, s, and we sort it. So we sort it, and then uh, we'll talk about that after going through main. Um, okay, so then we set up an answer string. And then for every single string that's been sorted in the array, we're going to append that to the end of the answer string. Because you know, it's already in order. So each one gets added on to the answer string, and we can finally output that answer string. We're actually we don't have to do this. This is like the Python way of doing things. You can just um, you can just output each one in order. So um, I would assume that something like this. Um, let me just copy paste. Here. You can also do the out sign. Okay, so without like any of the um, the spaces which is what C++ does um, when you print something. 
this actually just gives you one line of output. So this would work as well as that. So, um, but I do prefer this because it's more applicable to like other languages and it kind of explains what you're doing more clearly. So this is kind of unclear, like why are you outputting each one in order? But you know, if um, someone experienced is reading this, then well, they'll know, okay, it's sorted and C++ doesn't make an enter every time you print something. So this actually is more efficient writing. Um, in the actual competition, um, I think basically go for the shortest code possible. But um, going for clarity doesn't matter in a lot of cases because, um, well, if you know how to do the problem, it's likely that um, you don't really need to rush. But um, it is better for um, actual competitions to have as much time as possible for the harder problems. Okay, and then uh, this would be preferred, but let's just comment that out for now. Um, all right, so now let's go back to the comparison function. This is the main thing that um, I guess I learned from this problem. Uh, I didn't know how to compare strings before, but uh, this is one way to do it. Because all the other problems, they basically just involved integers. But this is quite nice. Um, okay, so first we have string, two new string variables, new a and new b. And new a is a plus b. So b is the second one, and a is the first one. And then new b is b plus a, where we put b first, and then we put a onto the end of it. Then um, I go through each letter in both of these strings. And I just use new a dot size, but their sizes are the same as I explained. Because you know, if you have two strings, if you add them together, it doesn't matter what order they're in, um, they're gonna have the same length in the outcome. So in this loop, if we say if new a i, so the element at i in new a, if that's less than the element at i in new b, then we return true. So let me think. This is saying if it's in, um, if it's already sorted in order, so basically a is smaller, then we return true, which means don't move a to the um, right of b, because a is in, uh, a is smaller. Otherwise, if new a at this index um, is greater than new b at that index, then we return false, which means switch it to the right of b. So a would then be switched to the right of b. And that makes sense because if you have a greater string in lexicographical order, um, you would move it to the right because that's how you make the outcome string smaller. I already explained that. And um, I, the reason I say else if here is because um, else in this situation, if you had else, then um, it would mean, well, they're equal. So you would just continue, and I'm not gonna write that. So even if at the end they're completely the same, we still have to return something, right? So we can return true or false. I'm just gonna return false. Um, I guess it depends on, actually it doesn't depend on anything. Just like return whichever one. I just felt like false was better. Um, yeah. So um, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.